This week, we get to look at function transformations, ways to move and bend around functions to look and act differently as you want them to. We're going to make a lot of use of function notation and function expression, so I recommend you review our video on basic functions here. Function transformations can be shifts, scalings, or reflections, each of which can occur in the x or y directions as we see in this table here. Now, memorizing every point in this table is going to be a nightmare. So we are going to build an intuitive understanding so that we don't have to memorize it, but we can rather just use some rules and intuition to figure out any transformation we see. First, we'll learn shifts. If we were to shift in the x direction, that would move the function and the graph to the left or right. So if we take the basic quadratic that we have here, x squared, and we shift it two units to the right, that would look like this. We see how the function changes and the graph changes. So let's break down where this comes from, this x minus 2 squared. First off, why if we're moving it positive 2 to the right, would we have negative 2 in the equation? Well, let's break it down by looking at a point. So here we compare f of x equals x squared with our shifted f of x equals x minus 2 squared. And let's follow one point. The origin in the original, 0, 0, now becomes 2 comma 0 in the shifted function. So for that to be true, the new function has to satisfy, as we see here, f of 2 equals 0. So if we look at the function and see what number we would need to add to make that true at x equals 2, we see it has to be the opposite, negative 2, rather the inverse of the positive 2. And we see that that checks out, and we shift the point as we want. So that's why it has to be a negative 2, even though we're shifting to the positive 2 right. This positive to negative shift in x transformations can be confusing and hard to remember. So keep it in your head with the phrase, left, right, lies, which tells us that when we apply x transformations, we actually need to apply the inverse operation in the function. Now note that this is for all x transformations and not for any y transformations. Next, why is the negative 2 inside of the square? x minus 2 squared versus x squared minus 2. This gets at another key distinction between x and y transformations. For x transformations, the transformation applies directly to x, or inside of the parentheses. For y transformations, the transformation applies to the whole function, or outside of the parentheses. As we see here, this is the difference between f of x minus 2 inside the parentheses versus f of x outside the parentheses plus 2, x versus y. It's a subtle difference, but those parentheses make all the difference in the world. Let's see an example of this by shifting first in the y and then in the x. So we're going to shift up 1 in the y direction. So f of x then becomes f of x plus 1 outside of the parentheses. And we see this applied to a function. The quadratic, for example, would become x squared plus 1. The 1 is outside of the square. Now let's see again a shift in the x direction. f of x then becomes f of x minus 1 inside of the parentheses. Applying this to a quadratic, we get the new function after shifting is x minus 1 parentheses squared. So we can see here the dramatic difference between x and y shifts. Now let's see how this all works with scaling, another type of transformation. So if we were to scale this quadratic function by 2 in the x direction, we would get this transformation we see here, stretching out in the left and right. So how do we actually do this transformation to the function? We need to multiply by some number to scale. So f of x becomes f of ax, applying the transformation directly to x because it's an x transformation. But what is a? We'll remember that in the x direction, left, right lies. So instead of multiplying by 2 to scale by 2, we really need to divide by 2. So that's the same as multiplying by 1 half. Plugging that in, our function becomes 1 half x, parentheses, squared. And that is our scaled by 2 in the x direction function f of x. Let's now compare with scaling in the y direction. If we scale in the y direction, that is stretching out by 2 up and down, and so we get the transformation we see here. Now how do we change the function? Well, again we need to multiply, but because this is a y transformation, we need to multiply on the outside. So that becomes f of x to 2 times f of x. So our final function from the quadratic is 2 times x squared. So now let's just put them side by side and compare x transformation scaling versus y transformation scaling. So scaling in the x, we get x over 2 parentheses squared. Scaling in the y, we get 2 times x squared. And we see the graphs shifted like we see here. Let's get some more practice by applying several transformations together. We'll start with a basic quadratic and then apply these three transformations in a row. Starting with f of x equals x squared, we first shift to the right by 3. 
A shift is going to be adding or subtracting. Uh, because this is x, we will apply the shift directly to x. And because left right lies for x transformations, instead of a positive 3, it is a minus 3. So that gives us, finally, f of x becomes f of x minus 3, parentheses. Plugging that in, we have x minus 3, parentheses, squared. On to the next shift, shifting down by 3. This is a y shift, so we need to subtract 3 outside of the function. f of x, close parentheses, minus 3. This gives us the full function so far of x minus 3 parentheses squared minus 3. Now, after doing it step by step by step, onto our last transformation, scaling in the x direction by 2. Scaling, remember, is a multiplication. And because it's an x scaling, we need to multiply directly to x. So it becomes x over 2, remembering left right lies. That's why we're dividing by 2 instead of multiplying by 2. Plugging that in gives us the final function of x over 2 minus 3 all squared, minus 3. Our last step here is to learn reflections, a simple extension of what we learned so far. To reflect a function, you just need to multiply it by a negative. So let's go ahead and reflect an exponential function. A reflection in the x direction would look like f of x becoming f of minus x. For an exponential function, this becomes 2 to the minus x. Now let's look at what this does to the graphs. We see in the graph that this, remember it's an x transformation, is a reflection in the x direction. However, I need to emphasize that the way you will see this written on the test is a reflection over the y-axis. This might trick you into thinking it's a y transformation, but remember that the motion, the reflection, the transformation, is moving in the x direction, so you should understand it as an x transformation. Now to compare, we're going to reflect in the y direction, which is over the x axis. So again, because this is a reflection, we will multiply it by a negative. But because it is a y reflection, that negative is outside of the entire function. So applying to the example function here, we see our reflected function becomes f of x equals negative 2 to the x minus 1. OK, and that does it this week for transformations. It's a lot to learn all at once, as we see summarized in this table here. So get some practice so you can be ready for the many types of questions on the SAT which will target this knowledge. It's also really important to know this to understand functions at a deeper level. So I encourage you to dig into this week's lesson. Hope you liked the video. If you want to hear more and see what else we're up to, hit like and subscribe and see a new video coming out from Point Avenue every week. If you want to talk to us, hear more about what we're doing, or have any questions, email us at contact at pointavenue.com. Bye!